When ASRock asked me to build them a Phantom Gaming PC, with this case right here from Inwin, the Special Edition 103, I thought to myself, damn, this is quite a looker. I think it adds in those extra colors without looking tacky, which is a hard thing to do, especially with Special Edition cases. Though, I thought to myself, one of the main things we can do with today's uh, build is put in not just one, but two, but three, but four, but five, but six RGB fans. And along the way, we're gonna be doing this with a Phantom Gaming RX 590, a Hyper 212 RGB cooler, Z390 Phantom Gaming X motherboard, and a 9900 KS. Now I am a little bit worried that the KS won't be able to be cooled by the 212 RGB, but we'll see how that turns out because what we're gonna be measuring here though mainly is the temperatures from one fan on all the way up to six and seeing where the sweet spot lies for how many fans you should add in to a case. Now before we can do any of that, we've got to build this thing. So let's get on with a tech yes whip up. So we started testing out Furmark and that is clearly not the benchmark we are looking for. It's just sitting on a pretty much thermal throttle level and it won't go any lower regardless of whether the side panel's on or off. So we're gonna try and find another benchmark now to get some accurate results. So the Inwin 103 did produce some very interesting results. It's kind of weird to test in this case to begin with because it's got some sort of 90 degree angle push thing going on that hits into tempered glass. And then that sort of works with the rear exhaust fan to really not make a whole lot of a difference if you mount fans on the bottom. And I'll show you what I mean uh, when we did the GPU test and we had the fan on the GPU at a static 100% fan speeds. And this was in a 27 degree ambient environment. So what we had up here first was we ran Furmark completely hopeless. We're not gonna get any accurate results. It was just stressing the GPU way too much. But when we jumped into heaven, we were able to get some really accurate results here where having the tempered glass side panel off actually did the best with all the fans going. And this was giving us 74 degrees. And then having it on, and we did this in two different scenarios where we had the uh, bottom three fans on intake versus outtake, we saw that having the fans on intake gave us 76 degrees versus 78 degrees. And now on the outtake, that 78 degrees spanned all the way down to only just one fan on, that being the exhaust fan, where when we turned that off, we then got 84 degrees. Uh, moving over now to the intake, we saw 76 going up to 77, 78, 78, and then 78 all the way up to one fan. So what we learned out of the GPU test was one very important thing, that is whatever build you do, you'll always want to have an exhaust fan pushing air out of the case. And the reason for this is that it's taking out all that hot air in a negative pressure environment. So all the gaps are allowing the cooler ambient air outside the case to come in. And that's why it's making a huge difference between the zero and one fan setup. And then we move over to the CPU side of things. I decided to test with Ida64 and surprisingly the 212 on the 9900KS in i64 stress test did really well in my opinion. We saw here with six fans on that we got an average of 73 degrees. And now I did have to test this a few times where I wasn't looking at maximum so much because it automatically bounced up as soon as the test began to 83 degrees. And so what we're looking at now is the average temperatures over these stress tests on the CPU itself rather than the individual cores. And what we saw with the tempered glass side panel off was 72 degrees roughly, then six fans scored a 73 degrees, three fans actually scored a 73.5, and then one fan scored a 74 degrees, and then having no fans on scored a 79 degrees. So just like the GPU comparison, we saw that there was a huge difference between zero and one fans. And then after that, at least in the 103, there wasn't a huge difference. So basically, I think the Inwin 103, when we look at the tempered glass 
on versus off, we can see that the temperatures are worse with the tempered glass on. And that's generally an indication that a case doesn't have that good of a setup to allow air to flow through as good, say for instance, as even an Air 540, which is a staple case that I've been recommending here on the channel for years, because out of the box, it has a really good push-pull setup. And so coming out of this video, what we can see with the results in a nutshell is that depending on the case you get, an easy way to test if that case has got a really good design is the tempered glass panel on or off, or if it doesn't use tempered glass, just take that side panel off, measure the temperatures on versus off, but also it's important to have at least one exhaust fan. And then of course, as you scale up to around three or four fans, it really starts to bell curve off after that, where you're not gonna be getting a whole lot of extra gains if you're adding in seven, eight or nine fans to your build. You're really just throwing in the extra RGB bling. And in this particular case, the 103 with the Cooler Master Master Box software, I actually had quite a few problems setting this up. I will say I had some weird issues just trying to figure out the software it was a bit ambiguous to use. And then after I managed to set it up, the weirdest thing was three of the fans were like going halfway with this effect. And then the other three fans were going all the way. So I don't know if that was intended or if that's a bug in the software, but I'd say to Cooler Master, I'd really like to see them step up their game with their RGB control software. Because what I saw with this software this time around was just something that was really hard to control and gave me some headaches. And with that aside, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for us, but also the Phantom Gaming stuff. Let us know in the comment section, are you digging this look? I actually think it looks pretty good, especially with the uh, Cooler Master 212 and also that InWin 103 case. These special editions are looking very bling worthy, coupled with the Phantom Gaming X motherboard that does go well with the whole series. So it is good to see that ASRock are getting a clean theme in that isn't tacky. Though before I get on out of here, we've got the question of the day, which comes from Benedite Koseros. And I'm sorry if I butchered that pronunciation, but we've got the question which asks, what is the average overclock for the Ryzen 3700X with a good liquid cooling system? Is 4.5 gigahertz all cores in range? And I'm gonna say straight away with all core overclocks, one thing that's really not spoken about a whole lot is ambient temperatures. For instance, in my 27C uh, ambience here, I'd be lucky to get a 4.3 gigahertz all core overclock, as opposed to someone say in Denmark at the moment, they might have really cold ambience and then get that same CPU to 4.4 gigahertz. So I'd say depending on your ambient temperatures on a liquid cooling system, you can expect from about 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz. And then of course you add in the silicon lottery on top of that. And yeah, 4.4 gigahertz, maybe 4.45 if you are very lucky but that's where it's kind of topping out at. I'd say if you're going really cold ambient, like five degrees ambient, you may be able to get that 4.5 gigahertz with a very good 3700X sample. Hope that answers your questions and I hope each and every one of you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. But if you have stayed this far and you're watching that content and you're enjoying it and you're not subbed yet, hit that sub button, ring the bell to see the content as soon as it drops here at Tech Yes City. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.